my book is done and I'm ready to self-publish it on Amazon. How do I do that? Well, today I'm going to be walking you through exactly how to upload your self-published book onto Amazon KDP. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher. I love sharing my insights about all things books and publishing with you. Before I get into the details of today's video, don't forget to hit subscribe. You'll be notified every week as I release new videos on publishing, making a career to being an author, and now being a mompreneur. And today we're talking about how to self-publish your book on Amazon KDP, and I'll be showing you an exact tutorial of what to do. I have lots of other videos on strategy that you should really have decided before you get to the upload phase, right? Your pricing, your categories, um, everything you need to know about your book cover and formatting. I have videos on that. So this is for when you are ready to hit upload. And I often suggest have my video on one screen and have your KDP account pulled up on the other. And you can literally follow along with exactly what I'm doing. Now today I'm going to be doing a deep dive as I am uploading one of my own books to Amazon KDP. I'm going to be doing this for ebook and print. So I'm uploading a second edition of my novel Enemies of Peace. So I actually want to give a really big thank you to Formatted Books for giving my book the makeover. It's so desperately needed. It looks amazing. Um, and because this will be for a second edition, I'll have an extra segment at the end of this video about that added step in the process. So if you're just uploading for the first time, it's not a, a second or third edition, you'll be able to stop mid video. If you want to see the second edition, you'll be able to follow along. I'll have chapters below so you can click ahead. Now, before you sit down to upload, this is what you need to have. So if you don't have these things in place yet, stop and come back. All right. You need your finished interior files. So for your ebook, that would be an EPUB file or um, a PDF for your print book. You need finished cover files. Um, now for the ebook, that can be a JPEG or a PNG. Um, for the print file, um, you need to have the print PDF in the KDP cover template. You need to know your ISBN, because I always advocate that you own your ISBNs and don't get the freebie ones. Um, you need a book description, your pricing plan to know what you're gonna charge for this book, and know your categories and keywords. You have all that? All right, let's get to it. Okay, so starting from the KDP home screen, we're going to sign in. There's a fresh new look to the home screen, so that's why I wanted to start here. Um, and there's a new look to report, so I'm guessing the bookshelf is going to get an update soon. And I'm guessing it'll be the week after this video goes live. Um, but here, I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Okay, and then from the bookshelf, I'm going to be creating a new book. Now, for those of you who are going to stick through to the end, this will be for a second edition. But the way you upload a second edition is first, you start a, cre a completely new book. So if you're watching this and you're like, I'm starting a completely new book, it's the same exact process for the beginning part. So the first thing we're going to do is click this big yellow create button. Now, I usually like to start with the ebook and then I add on the print books. That's just a personal preference. You can start with the print books and add on the ebooks. Totally up to you. Okay, and it's giving me the option ebook, paperback, hardcover, series page, or Vela. Now, um, this book is not part of a series, so I won't be using that. It's not a serialized short story, so I won't be using Vela. In this case, I'm going to be creating an ebook. So the very first question is the language for the book, the primary English. Well, the primary language is English, but you can obviously toggle and change that. All of my books are in English. I have not done any translations yet, um, but you can easily drop down and find what you need if it is in a different language. Okay, next it is asking for the book title. Now, I really like to tell people to copy and paste, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, the reason why I say that you should copy and paste is because you're excited, you're nervous in this moment, everything looks good, you're typing it really fast, you could have just a fat finger, get the... Um, characters inverted, something goes wrong, and then that's the name of your book. It's like putting it on their birth certificate. It's very difficult to change, so please do not um, risk it. Just copy and paste it. I've seen authors excited in the moment. They have a typo. Then they have to beg Amazon customer service, please, 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 please change this, and Amazon could say no, um, so just copy and paste it. Okay, um, I don't have a subtitle. If you did have a subtitle, that's where you would put that in. Um, series. Now, this book is not part of a series. If it was, I would click Add Series Details, and I do have several established series that I could add a book to, um, but in this case, I don't have one. So I could say Create a New Series, Add to Existing Series. I do not have a series to add it to. I have a separate video to show you how to add the series information, but that's not relevant to this book, so I am going to exit out and not continue. 
Okay, edition number. Now, if this is a brand new book for you, never been published before, do not fill this in. You don't need to put down first edition. Um, for this, for me, this is a second edition, so I'm going to put the number two, okay? Second edition here for my book. Um, again, if it is not applicable to you, leave this blank. It doesn't need to be filled out. Okay. MK Williams, that's me. Now I could do additional contributors. And in this case, I do have a forward by another author. So I am going to toggle down forward. I'm gonna type in their name. Okay, now in this case, I could do other things if it was illustrated, if it was a children's book, if it was anything else on there, if it was translator, who the translator was. In this case, it's just the forward by. Okay, so the description, again, I always recommend you've written it somewhere else, you've edited it, you drafted it, and now you are going to copy and paste it in here. Okay, now some of my formatting went away, so I am just going to format it a little bit. Um, ba -ba. Um, now, obviously, I've done other videos on your book description, optimizing it. I will go in here and optimize this um, at a later date, but for right now, I'm just going to go with the existing uh, description that I've drafted, but you, ca you can change that. The other items you can't change are the author name, contributors, um, the edition number, the book title. Those cannot change. Your description, you can change later. Okay. Publishing rights. I own the copyright. I hold the necessary publishing rights. Yes, I own everything for this book. I am self-publishing it. Um, it is not a public domain work. Okay, no, I do not have any sexually explicit content. Do, do, do. Now, the reading age is optional. Um, I'm not going to fill that out. This is going to be, it's a book that was written for adults. It doesn't have any explicit content in it, but it's not targeted towards children. If this was a children's book, I would definitely be filling in the age range to say, hey, this is for three to five year olds, or hey, this is for eight to 10 year olds. That reading level range is really important for children's books. This is um, standard fiction um, for adults, so anybody who's a grown up. So I'm not going to be filling that in. But if you do have a children's book, YA, middle grade, um, or younger, you would definitely want to be filling that out. Primary marketplace is Amazon.com. Majority of my sales do come from the U.S. because I'm a U.S.-based author. If I was based in the U.K. or Germany or Canada or Australia, or if that's just where most of my sales came from, I would definitely be changing that. But primarily, it's going to be Amazon.com. Okay, and my categories. Okay, so you will see I was able to pick all my categories. Now I do have a separate video on categories with Amazon and how to pick them. They recently changed them, but as you can see, I can now pick three categories, but I can only pick three. In the past, you could pick two and then you could go on the back end and add up to 10. Now you can only add three. So it's very important um, that you pick those three, but again, these can be changed. You can, and you probably should go in and um, update these. Some people say every 90 days, you're an author, you have a life, you're writing your next book, you're, you're working a, a job, you're raising a family. If it's at least every six months to a year to reevaluate, do that, okay? Okay, and now I'm going to be moving on to the keywords. Um, now the keywords can get very specific. They can um, be long tail, they can be short tail. And again, this is something you can and should be optimizing over time. Okay, and again, I can be updating my keywords however often as I want, and I am going to release this right away. It is a second edition. However, if I did want to do a pre-order, I could click this other button. I could set the date. When you set the date for your pre-order, this should be like setting the date for your wedding, okay? It's not a date you're going to change easily. It's not a date you're gonna set for next week, unless, of course, you're eloping and you don't care if nobody else is gonna be there. Um, so when you set this date, I suggest at least six to eight weeks in advance. It gives you time to market it, to promote it. Um, if you catch any errors, it gives you time to upload it. Do not set this for just next week because I guarantee something will come up, something will happen, and you'll either have to cancel your pre-order and lose all your sales, or you'll have to move it back and then Amazon will say you cannot change it again or else you're in pre-order jail. Okay, really think about that before you list it. But in this case, I'm going to release it right now because it's a second edition. Okay, then I'm going to hit save and continue.
So in this case, I need to do a KPF in EPUB or a .doc. Now I have an an EPUB file that was done by Formatted Books. So I'm really excited just to be able to select that and get that uploaded here. They work every single time um, without issue. So I love working with Formatted Books because I don't have to worry about validation. Okay, another tip I have for you guys, put everything all in one folder so you can easily find it. Um, if there's any drafts, if there's any, no, this is the final, oops, that wasn't the final, put that in a separate folder called your archive and only have your final files in one place so that way uploading is a lot easier. Okay, and now I am not going to use the cover creator. I really strongly discourage using their cover creator. Bring your own cover, either one you've designed or that somebody else designed. Even if it's one that you designed and you have no design skills, it's gonna look better than the cover creator, okay? Okay. That's uploading. Now this is a new question, relatively new. At least the first time I've seen it, it's AI generated content. So you need to say if you used any AI tools in creating the text, images, or translation of the book, okay? I, I don't think it's gonna say, okay, you can't publish it if you did use it. It just wants to know if you did, yes or no. Now I did not, but because a third party, Formatted Books, created the cover for me, they did the formatting, I had to ask them, I said, hey, Amazon's going to ask me, I need to know yes or no. Um, and they said, no, only humans, no AI was used. Um, so it's important to answer this question honestly. Um, I don't believe there's any detriment to saying yes. Um, they just want to know and keep track of it. I think it's probably because they want to roll out their own AI and they're doing some research on it, but that's just speculation. Okay. Now I want to launch my ebook previewer and I look, oh, it's running the quality check. Should take a minute. Okay. So while that's happening, I'm going to fill in my ISBN information because yes, I bring my own ISBNs. I have so many videos on this channel telling you why I think you should bring your own ISBNs unless you are doing only low content books. Unless you are only doing low content books and you don't necessarily care about um, whether the the content can go off mark off platform um bring your own isbn truly like it i i think it gives you more ownership and more power and authority over your books as the creator okay so it looks like i can launch do, 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 do. nope those are both words. <laughs> okay, so it did show me some spelling errors. In this case, nerding, like nerding out. It's saying nerding isn't a verb. We know it is. People like to nerd out. And man interrupting. Mm, it's kind of like mansplaining. So yeah, that works. Okay. You can see this beautiful new cover done by Formatted Books. Okay, and again, I'm the publisher. I'm going to go through every single page and make sure it looks good. Now is a great time to tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Formatted Books. This amazing team formats books. Whether you need an ebook or print interior or both, this team gets the files right so when you upload them to the major self publishing platforms, they are accepted the first time. They now also do cover art, so this can be your one stop shop as an author to get the design for your book done. And they charge self publishing prices for those of us who are all footing the expenses first. I love working with formatted books and I hope you'll give them a try too. Look at the amazing work they've done for my books. I can't wait to see what they can do for you too. Ignore all. Back. Okay, I'm gonna hit save and continue. Okay, now the very first thing on this last page is enroll in KDP Select. No, thank you. No, no, thank you. Um, my book will be available across multiple platforms. When you do KDP Select, you're saying you your ebook will be exclusive. The ebook will only be available via Amazon.com on KDP. So. I don't want that, um, so I'm not going to enroll. Now, if you do that, it's only for 90 days, but it will auto re-enroll you. So if you want to try it out, you have to put on your calendar, when is that 90 day, day deadline? When do I need to go in the day or two before and say, do not re-enroll me um, and things like that. And you cannot publish it anywhere until that full 90 day period has expired. Even if tomorrow you say, oh no, I don't want to do that anymore. Don't re-enroll me. You're still in for the full 90 days, okay? You can have your KDP account um, canceled um, or shut down if you violate these terms this is a contract so don't pick kdp select unless you are committed to being exclusive for your ebook on amazon kdp 
Okay, I this is going to be for all the territories. Um, I have not sold rights in other territories, so this would be the case if, say, I was able to get a distribution deal or a publishing deal with um, a publisher in another territory. I would restrict it and say you can't sell in this territory. That's not the case here. Okay. Okay, I did a separate video all about these percentages. I'm picking the 70%. I would like to make more. Thank you very much. Okay, now it auto generates the price. Um, so one best practice that I will go back and do once a year is go and look at all the prices, look at all the auto translated prices and revise them. I'm not doing that today. Today I'm just uploading. I try to batch my work. So I'll do all the pricing optimization another day. I'll do all my category optimizations on a different day. Today I'm just uploading and showing you that. Okay, do, 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 but I can take up to 72 hours by clicking publish below. I confirm and I agree, blah, blah, blah. Yep, I agree. I'm good to go. Publish my ebook. Okay, close. So from here I can hit close um, and I can start the paperback or I can go from here and click start the paperback. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, now the nice thing is it populated so much for me already because it's associated, right? The title is already there, thank you so much. Um, now the edition number I will have to put in. But I copied over my author name, I copied over the Ford um, contributor information, it copied over the description. How nice was that? I didn't have to do anything. Um, so that was very, very helpful. Um, now, what it didn't copy over is the categories. There are different categories for the Kindle store with ebooks and the print book store. Um, it did copy over all my keywords. That makes my life easier. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my categories now. Okay, so for some reason my software where I'm recording this is not letting me hit save my categories while I'm recording. So if there's a weird jump where you're like, I didn't see her click save, what happened? She's missing something. No, I literally had to stop recording and hit save. And you, you've missed nothing except for me shouting at my computer, why? Um, but now the categories are selected. So I'm gonna be able to keep going. And again, because I said create the paperback based on the ebook, I am able to keep the keywords the same. I do think that your ebook and your paperback keywords probably need to be a little different, but for the sake of simplicity today, um, I am just going to go ahead and leave them the same. Now publication and release date are gonna be the same. Now I could say my book was previously published. Now this is a second edition. So the first edition has been published, but this is a second edition, so I'm not going to select that. Now, I could, again, I could do release my book for sale now or schedule my book's release. You notice this does not say pre-order. This is not a print pre-order. It is literally just the day that it will show up on Amazon.com. Amazon did a big announcement. They made it seem like they were giving us a print pre-order. This is not a print pre-order. It is just you pre-scheduling when it will go live because otherwise it can take up to 72 hours. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I don't know when it's going to release, um, but I could schedule it to say I want it to release in exactly 72 hours. I want it to release in exactly one week. It will not be a pre-order. Do not let this fool you. Um, I made a whole video rant about it. Um, but again, just like with the ebook, I'm releasing it right now. It's a second edition. Um, so I'm not trying to do some coordinated big thing around it. I'm just going to do a big announcement once it's out. Save and continue. Okay, they default you to get your free ISBN. You already know how I feel about that. So I'm bringing my own ISBN for the paperback. Okay, so in this case, it's going to ask you for these details. Once you save and publish the book, you cannot change this without unpublishing it and needing a new ISBN. So really know, is this gonna be a color interior? Is this gonna be on premium paper? Um, is it gonna be on cream? I always do black and white interior on cream. Um, the cream, the contrast between the cream and the black ink and the white paper and the black ink, it's a little bit more soothing on the eye, so I always pick cream. Six by nine interior, perfect. I do have a bleed. So as you can see, it's saved with bleed. Formatted Books did a great job. Even when they sent this to me, instructed me to say, you need to say with bleed. Um, so I have the bleed. I like my paperback covers to be matte. You can also pick glossy, it's up to you. That's a personal preference.
Okay, and again, I can launch the cover creator to make a super awesome KDP cover, or I'm gonna bring the one that Formatted Books made for me. Now, I originally published this book back in 2018. It was a DIY cover. It looked DIY, let me tell you. Um, and I really wanted to give it a facelift, and so I was able to work with Formatted Books. They did a beautiful new cover for it. They did a beautiful updated interior. It just looks a bit sharper than what I could do on my own. I think the interior before was fine, but I really like what they were able to do with it. Um, so that is uploading. Um, yes, I did upload the manuscript. It is just taking a hot minute to show up. Okay, now it says check this box if the cover you're uploading includes a barcode. Now mine does include a barcode, so I am going to check this box. If you did not put a barcode on the back of your book, don't worry about it. They will auto assign you one. The barcode will have the ISBN that you entered on it, okay? I know there's a lot of other creators out there, when they talk about barcodes and they talk about ISBNs, they talk about them interchangeably. Barcodes and ISBNs are not the same thing. The ISBN is the identifying number. Yes, it will appear on the barcode. Yes, it will appear on the um, uh, sales page on Amazon. Yes, it should also appear on your copyright page of the book. But a barcode is literally just that point of sale item that is scanned. Whether you bring it yourself, whether it's assigned to you, that doesn't matter. But obviously KDP wants to know, I'm not going to put another barcode on top of this and have it look all messed up, but there's two barcodes. So I'm saying there's already a barcode, okay? Okay, again, no, no AI was used. Now I did a whole video just explaining exactly where to go when Valker says, this is the wrong imprint. And you're just like, ah, why are you saying this? Um, there's a very specific place to go in Valker that will show you. And so I'm gonna actually move this over here for a second. Okay, so down here it says KDP or another division will ask you for this. So I am going to copy this exactly. Okay, copy paste. Oh, it didn't like that I put the dots in my name. Okay. Okay, now I can launch my previewer. So it seems like it didn't want me to upload my interior or my exterior until I had the right imprint in there. So I just had to click upload on those again. And because I made a change, it asked me to verify. That happens. Don't panic about it. Uh, obviously, you can very easily read what it says there and then be like, yep, I know exactly what change I made. It's because you didn't accept it the first time. Okay, it did take a couple minutes to get my... Um, preview to populate it, it truly does they say why don't you have a coffee why don't you make a sandwich it does take a minute um so i started recording as soon as this popped up so again i'm going to be able to click through it's saying quality check there's no issues i wasn't expecting any because again four minute books did an amazing job um i trust their work every time that's why i work with them um ba -ba -ba. Oh, nice little details there okay well, I think I am good to approve this. So I'm going to click through everything. I'm going to stop uh, recording because that I don't want you to see the whole book. I want you to buy it and read it. Um, and then I will go ahead and click approve. All right, so once you've gone through and clicked that approve button, it takes you back to the top of the page, gives you a final chance to review. And then it's going to say, this is how much it's going to cost to produce your book. Um, and if you're good with that, then you can go ahead, save and continue. Okay, so just like with the ebook, it's asking me rights for all territories. Again, I have all the rights for all my territories. I have not sold them. Um, if that was the case where you did, this is where you would go in and individually select ones that you're excluding from distribution. Um, so the nice thing here is that, again, it's going to remind you what the printing cost is and what your distribution is. I do not do expanded distribution. I've done several videos on this. I get my expanded distribution through Ingram Spark. I'm going to do another tutorial on how to upload to Ingram Spark. The promise of Amazon KDP expanded distribution does not meet up with reality. Um, and so I just go with Ingram Spark for all of my wide distribution for the print books. Um, for many reasons, um, which I will go into in another video, but um, I'd highly recommend that you don't do expanded dis distribution. If you really just wanna save your time, if you're thinking, you know what, like it's too much for me to have all these different platforms, I'm just gonna do that, go for it, but I don't think you're going to be happy with the results that you see. They will not get you to Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble doesn't like Amazon. Um, it won't get you to some of these other massive retailers. They don't like Amazon. Amazon's hurting their business. Okay, so I've entered my price. Again, I go back and I do my price optimizations a different time, um, but it shows me my print cost. It shows me the royalty that I'm going to make, and then I'm able to scroll down and save. Now, I could request a proof. Now, the proof copies have the band around it that say proof, not for resale. Um, so I think in this case, I would always be better off just publishing and ordering an author copy um, that doesn't have the band because I can't do anything with the band. And I feel like that's such a waste of paper and resources. Like I wouldn't even want to take a photo with it because it has this huge band over it. Um, so yeah, I don't like to get those, but 
some authors really like having the physical proof. They'll mark it up. They'll make changes from it. If that works for you, absolutely do that. That just doesn't work for me. It's not my process. Now, again, it says it can take up to 72 hours. Um, I'm good with that. So I'm going to go and hit publish your paperback book. Okay, so now it says it's in, it's in review, it's waiting, I'm good to go, I'm going to click done. Um, now, uh, if you are just uploading for the first time, if you're doing a hardcover, it's literally the same exact process that you go through for the paperback, um, it's just hardcover. Um, so just rewatch that part again. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is a little, hey, if you are only doing a, a first time upload, um, single book, congratulations, your book is uploaded. Um, if you are doing a second edition, this is what we're gonna do next, okay? Um, so stay tuned. If you enjoy this video, but you're leaving, a thumbs up, subscribe, like, comment, all the good things. Thank you so much for being here. If you're doing a second edition, sit tight. Okay, and that's how you upload your books. Now, next, I'm gonna be following the steps to link and remove the first edition. So if you aren't doing that, then I'll see you later, and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're gonna be doing a second edition, follow me. All right, so as you can see, it is the next day. I've already received confirmation emails from Amazon KDP that both the ebook and the paperback are live, and they in fact are live. I've already looked at the sales page on amazon.com. So now the very first thing I'm gonna do is actually not within Amazon KDP. I'm gonna go to Author Central. Okay, so Author Central is where every, in theory, everything you need as an author is centrally housed, but we know that's not true um, because Amazon likes to be fun. So what I need to do is I need to claim the new book here because I want this to show up under, um, nope, it's not there. So I want this to show up under um, my page. Oh, it is there. Okay. Well, that's good. It's already been claimed. If it had not shown up there, um, I would have had to add a book, um, but it did show up. So that was good. I have to show more. Okay. So yeah, so that is there, that's taken care of. Um, all right, so I am ready now to go back to KDP. So again, if your new book um, that's published is not showing up, you're gonna click add book, you're gonna type in the ISBN or the title or the ASIN and it will pop up and you can claim it. Mine is already showing. I definitely wanna make sure that's showing first um, because that's gonna help me in the final step I'm gonna show you today. All right, so I'm going back to my KDP bookshelf. Now the latest book, the second edition, is showing. Beautiful, perfect. Okay, I'm going to scroll down and go to the next page to find the original version, okay? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to unpublish. I'm not going to delete, I'm going to unpublish. Okay, unpublish book. By confirming, unpublishing the book, it should be available to buy and it should become unavailable to buy and unsearchable from Amazon storefront. It will not be available for purchase until you publish it. Yes, that's what I want. Okay. All right, and now I'm gonna go back and make sure that the paperback is also unpublished. Do -do -do -do. Unpublished print book. Unpublish. Okay. Right. It took me back to the front page again, but I need to do one more thing before I do that. Okay, I need to make sure I have the ASIN numbers from the old version. Sorry, I keep scrolling around because I have a lot of books. Um, so I'm gonna open up a notepad document. Okay, so I've opened up a notepad document and I'm going to be saving the ASIN numbers for um, the ebook. So first edition, ebook, ASIN. Okay, now I can obviously provide the ISBNs, but things work a lot faster within Amazon by providing the ASIN. That is their go-to number for searching things within their own system when I contact customer service. Okay, so now I'm going to scroll back down to the bottom. I'm gonna go back to my first page of books. Life is fun when you publish a lot of books. And I'm gonna write down my second edition, ASINs. Now, my books have ISBNs, but the ASIN is specific to Amazon. Um, so every single object that is sold on Amazon has an ASIN, um, but only books would have ISBNs. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. So now I have my notepad document. It looks like this. Whatever note app you have on your computer will work, um, but I just want to have that there. 
So what I'm going to do now is I've unpublished the first edition, the second edition is published. I want to make sure though that these are linked, right? The ma major difference is that I have a new cover. Um, I cleaned up a couple typos, but I do have a forward from a new author, which is gonna help me like promote the new edition with the new cover. So I need to go to KDP customer support, not author central support to ask these books to be linked and connected. So, so I was able to go to the top here and click help. And now I'm going to go down to contact us. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to be going to the Amazon store and product detail page. So my new, okay. So this is a totally new version than the last time I did this. Um, so now I'm going to be just chatting with them. Um, that should be fun. This is a totally new contact us help desk experience for, um, KDP support. So this is fun. Hey, this is a future day present day MK, I should say, hopping in here. Um, so what happened was I did have to reach out to the chat support to link my first and second editions. The first person who helped me was very responsive and they said, hey, it'll take 10 business days. You know, after 10 business days, it still wasn't linked. So I did have to reach out on chat again. I explained the situation the same as before. Here are the ASINs for the first edition. Here are the ASINs for the second edition. The difference is a cover and a new forward. The story itself is the same. All the reviews are applicable. Can you please link them? I asked 10 days ago, can you please update? The person that time said, yes, I'll do that right now. Um, it should show up within 48 hours and it actually showed up within, within like four hours. So again, just that reminder to be patient, give yourself time and realize that the people on the other end are just doing their jobs and sometimes you do have to follow up. All right, that's how you do it, folks. I hope you found this helpful. Please let me know below what other things you wanna see me discuss about Amazon KDP that I haven't already covered on my channel. There's so much to go into. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, or even that shiny new thanks button. That tells YouTube that you're getting value from this information, and then they can get it in front of other authors like us. Now you can get back to writing your book.